Tuesday Floss Tube. Hello crafty friends. My name is Caroline. Welcome back. Daily Crafty Chat. Uh, it is Tuesday, October the 6th and it is, uh, the weather is, uh, we're, we're, we have a gale warning in effect and it has, the wind has really picked up overnight. Yesterday was very, very calm in the morning and then throughout the day the wind started up and then over overnight last night it really started to pick up and we are supposed to be up around I think 35 knots by uh, by either later today or tomorrow morning so it, it the wind is sort of it it picks up and then it abates and then picks up and abates and so when there's a gale warning you don't really want to be out on the boat um, because you don't you, you can't guarantee <laughs> how safe it will be so uh, it's a nice day to stay inside and listen to the wind and stay cozy with the wood stove on, a cup of coffee. So I'm taking a sewing break to film a quick chat with you. Uh, time is going to be a little bit short over the next few days as we prepare to make the big move back to our home in London, Ontario. And, uh, I have a lot of packing still to do. I haven't even started. <laughs> it's all good. It'll get done. Um, but you know, it 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 uh, it will it will all get done. So I I need to get to that. And of course, uh, you know, we are still we're still working. So packing and working and um, trying to fit in a few minutes of crafting here and there just for sanity's sake. So I, I know I don't have time to make really long, super chatty, rambly videos over the next little while. So I thought what I might do is something, um, over the next couple of days, I'm just going to call them floss tube shorts and I'm going to focus on one cross stitch project every day to share with you. And so it's going to be a surprise each day what I pick. Well, I mean, the surprise will be kind of blown by the screen cap on the video. You'll know before you watch the video which project I decided to work on and share with you. And I'm going to try and choose a few different stitching projects that I haven't managed to touch since I've been here because I brought a few. <laughs> As we do, I overpacked um, all of my projects and there are a number of them that I have not even put a single stitch in. And so uh, the plan is to leave on Monday, Thanksgiving Monday, and make the drive back home then. That is also the 12th, October 12th, which is our wedding anniversary, which is also the day that I would like to start the Jeanette Douglas Blooming Bouquets Stitch Along. So if you're joining with me in that stitch along, our start date for that is Monday. So I only have um, from today, Tuesday until Monday, left here at my my special home. So uh, I thought it might be fun to have something a little bit extra special to look forward to at the end of the day. Something that I haven't worked on over the summer. A, a stitching project that I brought with me because clearly I love them all and, uh, and put a little bit of, of time into it and then share it with you the next day. So I'm thinking each day I might be able to, to manage about maybe 10, just you know, 10 ish minutes or so. And then when I get back to London, um, I'm sure the length of the videos will increase exponentially. However, the project that I chose to work on last night was my sweetheart tree. Oh, and of course the chart is just under my little tripod here. So whoops, hang on a second. I'm going to get jiggled a little bit here. Okay the teeny bee skep. So you might remember this chart. I started this one. This was my July high tea start. So I started it on July 1st and it is so tiny and sweet and perfect. I just love it. So this came as a full kit. And actually, I think it was um, gifted to me in a in a bag of goodies from my friend Sandy, 
um, who also lives in London. And this was tucked into that bag and I just absolutely fell in love with it. And it had everything in the kit that you needed to, to make it including all of the floss, the needles, the beads. Uh, there was some metallic, uh, one length of, of metallic, fortunately not a lot of metallic, and, and everything, the, the linen as well. And what is the linen? The linen that this is stitched on is a 35 count, oh, see I thought it was, I thought it was a 28, but it's not. It's a 35 count lamb's wool linen by Wichelt and uh, DMC Colors, Krynik Silver Cable, and uh, Threadworks Butter Rum. Oh, so, okay, so pardon me, this is in a little plastic baggie, but that's the Butter Rum. I think you can see that. It's a, it's a variegated floss. So that's the Threadworks. That's the leftover bit of metallic. Leftover because I stitched it and then I've rolled up my extra DMC. It's just waiting there. And here's the beads. There is a charm in there as well. The charm that goes at the top. You can see it's just hiding in there. The charm goes at the top of the skep, right there. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. Anyone familiar with beekeeping? Donna Ray, what is this this medallion supposed to represent? Or is it just supposed to be a pretty decoration? Any ideas? Uh, so, and here's where I got to. So if you remember what I had done before, I added in, remember I was just talking about that metallic. So you can see the metallic has been woven in to those cross stitches and that is actually called cross stitch with surface weaving. So I finished that. It wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't a lot there. And so I did that. And then, um, since the last time I shared this with you, so last night I did all of this back stitching here and the little flowers with the white and um i started because i like to do the cross stitching first and then the back stitching so i did that there and it's so cute so what i'm going to do next is the little is the little hole in the middle of the b skep that dark hole and i'll do the i guess i guess i'm gonna, you're going to call i'm going to call it the handle at the top, that little part there that I forgot to stitch the first time when I stitched the skep. So I'm going to stitch that handle and then I'm going to do all of that back stitching on the B skep. That's what's next. And these three lines here, these are, this is just back stitch. That's just back stitch. And then you can see this here, this line of specialty stitch and this line, that's where that thread works floss is used that, uh, pardon me, I have to raise my glasses to look at this. That's actually, no, is it? No, that's just white and green. Hmm. I'm going to have to read the instructions again, clearly before I get there, but that thread works is definitely in that line of specialty stitches there. And there are some beads in there as well. There's quite a few beads all along. I thought I might add a few in these beads that are in up here. I thought I might just add them in so that I could see what they're going to look like. Since I don't have the, the little, this is a little six inch Q snap frame that I'm using and I won't have to move the fabric. It's plenty large enough to accommodate the entire size of the stitching. So I thought I might, I might test a few beads and see what they look like because I think they're going to be really pretty. Really, really pretty. And that's it. That's what I worked on last night. So this is going to get, this is, I'm going to tuck this back away in my project bag because I'm choosing another project to work on this evening. It's a surprise. I'll show you tomorrow. And uh, we're going to, uh, I've got some more sewing to do this afternoon. Nicholas has his bassoon lesson this evening. 
and then uh, I think we're having leftovers again for dinner. We cooked a lot. John um, John cooked a lot of, of extra food on the weekend. So Mondays and Tuesdays are usually our busiest days of the week. Well, Wednesday as well. Thursday and Friday tend to be a little bit more calm, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are the busiest days. So if we have extra food made on the weekend, it's a big help those first few days of the week. So we can just um, heat up a few leftovers, eat quickly, and then get back to whatever it is that still needs doing. So um, he, we have to keep an eye on the direction of the wind because of where our boat is parked. Um, if the wind changes directions and starts, um, if the waves get too big over on that side, it knocks the boat against the dock and um, we will need to move the boat around over to my father-in-law's dock where it's a little bit more sheltered. But at the moment, the wind is coming from a very, from a bit of a different direction. It doesn't usually come in, what is it, southwest? We don't normally get gales in a southwest direction. I'm going to have to look that up, which direction it's coming from, because now I feel like I'm, oh yes, yeah, southwest. It is, so I'm going to just refresh this. Let's see what the marine forecast is telling us right now. At the moment, it is 25 knots, diminishing to southwest 15 early this evening, increasing to southwest 25 overnight, increasing to northwest 35 knots early Wednesday morning, and then di diminishing to northwest 30 knots near noon on Wednesday. So the waves are going to be about two meters, I'm forecasting two meter waves. That's... <sighs> that's usually a take that with a grain of salt because they can be anywhere from two to three meters in a gale um, depending on where you are in the in the open water anyways more about marine weather than you probably wanted to know but I find it interesting even though I don't like to go out in it ever even when it's calm interesting fact I have not stepped off this island since the end of July it is October 6th. Fun fact. So it's going to be very, it's going to be a really interesting um, reintroduction to driving and um, people. <laughs> I, I, anyway, that's it for me today. That's enough. I hope you're well. I hope you're safe. And I will see you tomorrow for another Floss Tube Short. And it'll be a surprise what I work on tonight. So take care, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow.